Welcome and hello. This is a video exercise in HECRAS. And in this exercise, we are going to be loading in bathymetric data into our RAS mapper. All right, so what I have on the screen is the uh, sort data source we're going to visit a little bit later to download the data. There's Google Earth. And here is our HECRAS interface. So let's start from the very beginning. I'm going to go up to File, New Project. Go ahead and navigate to where you want to save your project. And then go ahead and give your project a title. And then click OK. So go ahead and click OK. And now with the RAS Mapper window open, if you don't have that open already, just go up to GIS Tools, RAS Mapper, and you're good to go. All right, first thing what I want to do is create a geometry. So to do that, I'll just right click New Geometry, give it a name, close the Layer Association dialog box for now. And then after that, I want to come down here to Terrains. I'm going to right click and create a new RAS terrain. Okay, it wants, a, it wants a coordinate system first, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, where this data is going to be uh, coming from is in the state of Oregon. I decided to arbitrarily choose the Willamette River, I mean the Columbia River, which is uh, this river right here, it goes out to the Pacific Ocean through the Puget Sound. And uh, let's go ahead and just grab a, a coordinate system for this area. Let's, let's visit this spatialreference.org webpage. For a coordinate reference system, I want to use uh, UTM, and I believe this is zone 10. So let's go ahead and find the, the projection for that. It's going to have a northing and easting value to it. I'm going to go to this spatialreference.org here, and then go ahead and type, uh, click on EPSG. Now what I want to type in is, let's see, how about UTM? Would it have that? Okay, that looks like we're close. I just need to find zone 10 now. That's for the west coast of uh, the United States. But um, definitely take a look at your map to make sure you have the correct zone here first. You know what? I'm just going to uh, continue typing here. Zone 1010 North. Okay, there we go. Gosh, there's still like 15 different rec records to use here. Okay, I'm going to go with this one here. I think this is the one I've used before. NAT83, UTM zoned 10 North. It's EPSG 26910. So I'll click on that. Confirm that this indeed, this will cover uh, what I'm looking for. Click on the .prj file. That'll download the projection file. Looks like it's already complete. So what I'm going to do is move it into my project directory. I have another projection here that I was uh, planning to use, but I'm going to go with this one instead. So I'm going to go right click, rename, projection, EPSG. Okay, so I need to remember to grab 26910. When I go back to RAS Mapper, that's this one right here. Apply and OK. Now, I don't have uh, an actual terrain file yet. What I'm going to do is create a modification in an empty terrain and then use the bathymetric points, the individual data points, to create a grid which will represent the, the terrain underneath the surface of the water. All right, so I'm just going to click Create Empty. And that's probably a good thing to mention because oftentimes I will go and right-click Download Data from the USGS source but it will be lidar data taken from a plane it doesn't have the actual geometry of the the river channel beneath the current water surface elevation at the time that the data was collected so just want to make sure i do have northing easting values in the bottom left corner when i hover around my map now what i next want to do is focus in on where in the world this is so here is the river I don't want to be way out in the ocean. I want to be a little bit upstream. So maybe right in this area right here. I'm going to go ahead and go to my bathymetric data source. This is the National Center for Environmental Information a slash map slash bathymetry. So I'll leave a link to this URL in the description of the video. So um, what I'm looking for is, oops, I'm going to zoom in. Okay, here's the river right here. It's not a small river. So this little segment right here will do. I'm going to go ahead and click on this, draw out a rectangle just to sort of identify the region I'm interested in. Give it a moment to load. And then it looks like it found some data. I want to make sure I have surveys with bags already highlighted. Oh, so that's this one right here. Okay, so let's grab the uh, more recent one and then click extract this survey. Now what it's going to do is ask me for my email. Once you type it in and then click on this submit request, You'll get an email to uh, confirm your request, and then you'll get an email a couple minutes later to actually download the data. To save some time, I'm just going to go ahead and show you what those emails look like. Here on my screen are the two emails. So I have the NCEI data extraction order uh, that's been received and then completed. 
So I'm uh, blocking out most of my screen here, but I'll just click on this. Here is the email itself. And then if I just go ahead and click on this link right here, it'll start the download, I believe. Yep. So it started to download. I already have this downloaded though. So I'm going to go ahead and just also skip this process. This is what the file looks like. It's NCEI order number such and such. I'm going to go ahead and just rename that to NCEI bath data. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and open that up and then select on, I actually got two different orders. So I'm going to select on this one here and then click on my surveys XYZ and then open it up in a text editor. So that's this right here. What I'm looking at is the name of the survey, the latitude, the longitude, and the depth. I'm making it a little bit harder on myself here. I could have just had a projection with lat long, but maybe you have your data in northern easting and you need to convert it to lat long. Or in my case, I have the data downloaded in lat long. I need to convert it to northern easting with the correct projection. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that by using some tools in Excel as well as QGIS. All right. So anyway, this is my source data, surveys.xyz. What I'm going to do is actually just put a copy of this onto my desktop. So I'm going to just copy that there just so I can easily access the files I need to and also see them on my screen without having to dig down through the project folder. All right. So the first step here is to open this program. You may have heard of it called Microsoft Excel. Then I'm going to start a new worksheet. All right. So here on the first sheet, what I want to do is import the data. I'm going to go to data and then get data from a file text slash CSV, and then navigate to my desktop. Let me go all files. Okay, there it is. Survey.xyz. It's like I can see it on my desktop. It's right there. Okay, so it's telling me it looks like it recognizes the data properly, right? Long survey number and depth. So go ahead and click load. All right, so that data came in fine. Now what I want to do is I don't need the name of the survey. I can delete that. Also, I don't need um, how many points do I have here? Yeah, so I have about 12,000 points. I'm going to uh, filter out some of those points. And before that, I'm just going to grab the data and move it over to a brand new worksheet here. So I'm going to paste as values. The A here, this is the longitude. The B, column B here is the latitude. C here is going to is the depth. So we'll convert that to a vertical elevation a little bit later. And then for D, I'm going to just call this a filter and then type in a quick equation to calculate the modulus of the row number, which is what I use for filtering. So just a little Excel trick that I've kind of adopted over the years. Row, and then let's see, minus two. And then if I want every, say, 10 points, then I'll just divide by 10 there. And then let me go ahead and copy that down to the bottom of the data set. So 12,230 and paste. All right. So now what I want to do is highlight these first four rows and then go to data, filter, and then I'm going to filter on my filter column and only take one of these uh, 10 different values. So I'll just click on the zero, click OK. And instead of 12,000, so it's filtered. The row number is preserved. But there's only about 1,200 records showing right now. What I want to end up doing is have an X, or northing, easting, and value for elevation. I don't have that yet, so I'm going to use QGIS to make that transformation for me. And ultimately, where that's going is going to be back into RAS Mapper. So let's go ahead and sketch out a modification and sort of get the final resting place for this data prepared and ready to go. So this video is about tech RAS to a certain extent. Let's go ahead and add a modification, click on polygons, and then let's just go with multipoint. Okay, you know, I probably should have found my location on Earth first, but I'll just go ahead and click OK and then sketch out an area for now. So double click, and then I am going to use terrain elevation based on control point overrides. That's correct. Just leave that as it is. And that looks good. And then what I'm going to do here for the control points, I'm going to right click and then edit elevation control points. This brings up a little dialog box with my X, Y, and Z values. So this is going to be my easting, northing, and elevation values, which will outline and define the terrain of the Columbia River once I'm all uh, done with this project. So we're going to return to this data table for data input and then reposition our rectangle here to actually give us that 3D grid. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind. We'll be back for that in a little bit. Let's open up QGIS now. So that's a free uh, GIS program that's great for doing little transforms and stuff like this. 
you know, arguably better than ArcGIS for certain tasks, but you know, that's sort of up for debate. All right, so let's go ahead and create a project. Actually, we don't, don't even need to do that. What I'm going to do is set the projection. So project properties. Now I'm importing data with lat long. So I need a coordinate system to accept that, such as WGS84 here. This is EPSG4326. Okay. So I'll go ahead and click apply, click OK. Now what I want to do is uh, import that data. So I want to go layers, add layer, and then add the limited text layer. All right. This reminds me I need to export that data from Excel in a CSV format. So I have my long lat and depth. I'm going to go ahead and remove this first uh, worksheet because I don't think I can export a CSV file with more than one worksheet in the workbook. So boom, delete. All right, now I'm back on my one and only worksheet that's left. So I'm going to go to file, save as the data, the, the file type here is going to be CSV UTF-8 comma delimited dot CSV. And then uh, let me navigate to my desktop. That's right here. I'll go ahead and name this lat long data and then click save so that'll show up on my desktop now we can go ahead and reference that dot csv file so i'll go ahead and navigate bath data lat long that looks good it already recognized down here that the x field is longitude and then the y field is latitude the z value is going to be depth. now i need to make a correction later because the depth is not the same thing as the elevation but we'll take care of that and the coordinate reference system is right here the same as the project. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click add and then click close. All right, so here is the area along the Columbia River. This is the 1200 points or 12,000 points. I think I might actually have all 12,000 here. It's all right. We'll, we'll take care of that later. And this is not the exact same location as you saw because when I originally downloaded it, I would think I was a little bit further downstream, but no big deal. What I want to do next is before exporting this to the northern easting, I need a change the projection because right now if I'm hovering around you see my coordinates are 46 north negative 123 is the longitude I want that to be northing and easting based on my UTM zone 10 north projection so I'll just come down here to click on projection for the filter I could just type in UTM zone 10 okay so this is something that i recently already selected in preparation for this lesson but you can go down and probably find it right here let me just keep typing in the filter here zone 10 okay yep here it is so nad 83 utm zone 10 so i'll click that then click apply and yes that's correct and okay and okay now in the bottom of the screen you see that the coordinates are now in northing and easting so that's exactly what i'm looking for now I can export this layer, this data, into a format that can read into HECRAS. So right click and then export, save feature as. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my desktop. I'm already there. I'm going to name this bath data nor east, and that's going to be a .csv file. So that looks good. We'll go ahead and click save. And then for this coordinate reference system, this is important. I want to make sure that I'm using UTM zone 10. And what's also important is down here in geometry, I want to select as, uh, let's see, X, Y, Z. Okay, so I think that's everything. Comma separated. And go ahead and click OK. And then click OK. All right, so we have our data here. Let's go ahead and open this up in a text editor. And this is a little bit more than I expected, but we got what we need here. So the first X, Y, Z values is our easting and then northing. And then here's the depth. And then it looks like it gave us back the original long depth data and the filter number right here at the end one two three and so on okay so that's fine um better too much than not enough i'm going to go back to excel now i'm going to create a new worksheet and then bring that data in do some final touch up such as converting the depth to an elevation and then uh, we'll be good to import into ras mapper so data get data from file from text slash CSV. Now I'm going to navigate to my desktop once again. It's already here. Bath data northeast.csv. Wait for that to show up. Okay, so here's all the data. I don't need all this, but I'm going to import it anyway. So click load. All right, so the data came in. Let me go ahead and check out what we have here. Okay, so it was all 12,000 records. Now I can conduct that filter. I guess I just built the filter a little too early. And before that, I want to convert this column C from a depth to an elevation. 
I'm going to call this elevation, or I guess I could call it Z. This is Z, and then this is depth. I'm going to be kind of arbitrary about this and just say it's 100 minus the depth. Now, in reality, I would have a vertical datum and I would line this up, but that's not really the focus of the lesson here. I'm more interested in just getting the data into RASMapper. Okay, so I'm going to go down to the bottom, copy that equation, paste. Now it's these data points that I'm interested in. Now I'm going to um, change my filter and then only select one out of every 10 points. Click OK. That way I'm not putting too much stress on the RASMapper table data interface. If it's not a problem, I can add all 12,000 records, but I think 1,200 points would be good for the first time around. This might even be too much. So what I'm going to do is highlight these data points and then scroll down, control C to copy. I'm going to go back to RAS Mapper, close this. Here is that table and then control V. Okay, so they all paste it in here. If I scroll down to the bottom, we have 1,223 points. That looks good. Click OK. And now I will stop editing, say yes. So of course the points aren't where I was, but we can find them by just going to right click, zoom to layer. All right, so here are the points, looks good. And then where on earth is that polygon? Let me zoom out a little bit. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the entire modification. Now that I know I'm at the right location on planet earth, I'll go ahead and remove layer and then right click, new modification, polygons, and then multi-point, Okay, go ahead and sketch out an area. We'll go ahead and modify this a little bit later and then click OK. Now let's bring in our control points, right click and then edit elevation control points. Oh, look at that. It's saved somehow. Okay, not complaining. Click OK. Stop the edits and yes. Okay, so here are the points. Again, this is only 10% of the points. So if the data doesn't look quite right, we can bring in some more. I'm going to go ahead and just update this polygon. So I'll click on polygon. Edit pencil, and then here's the edit feature. And I'm going to double click here, and then sort of drag this to the extents of the reach right there. If I want to add a new vertex point, I can just click and then move it, and then click, and then go ahead and move that. Okay, I don't necessarily need every point. Maybe I'm only interested in this area right here. So I'll click stop, save the edits, and that is how to import bimetry data into your grass mapper program let's go ahead and take a cross section here just to see what it looks like and confirm that everything looks all right and features i'm going to let's see ex click the plus button profile lines and then click edit i want to sketch from left to right looking downstream something like this and then profile line one that looks good click the edit pencil and then um, click on the terrain all right, so this looks good. This is the main channel right here. Again, this elevation is probably off by a certain number because I just said 100 minus the depth. So whatever the the water surface elevation was at the time of that survey, that's what I should have used instead of 100. Not a problem. I could have looked that up in the metadata. But what I would want to do is probably modify the perimeter of that polygon or along the perimeter, set some number like 100. That's going to serve as my overbank elevation that way the number doesn't go down to 80 because this looks kind of weird on the far left side and the far right side but right down here through the center is what i'm interested in all right well that's it for this exercise what we did was download bathymetric data from the ncei webpage and then use microsoft excel and qgis to modify the projection data and the coordinate reference system and then bring that into our rise